and welcome to Biz News. I'm Elizabeth Lee together with Tony Lopez. Tonight we're going to learn a lot of things from the CEO and managing partner of Deloitte Philippines, Greg Navarro. Greg, thank you for coming back to being on our show. I'm glad to be here. I hear that business is really good given all the standards that are uh, tightening things out now. Well, there's a lot of uh, regulatory requirements that uh, give us a lot of jobs and these uh, things uh, do evolve and the changes come practically every day so uh, we but have to be updated. But tell us a little bit about Deloitte Philippines. It's the youngest. Well it's the youngest. We have been a representative of Deloitte here. The name, the full name of the company is Manabat Delgado Ampere. We've been with Deloitte for the last uh, 15 years and uh, it has grown from a small firm to now about 350 and mostly dealing with uh, the clients of Deloitte uh, worldwide. Mm. And most of what uh, Deloitte Philippines does here, audit, Audit, uh, tax, tax uh, financial advisory, a little bit of outsourcing, and uh, what we call enterprise risk uh, that's uh, involved in IT controls, uh, internal audit. Mm. Things but like Deloitte that. is what? Number one worldwide? Well, Deloitte is, uh, is close to that. Uh, last year, we were considered the biggest uh, in the world. This year, we've been aged out a little by somebody else. I won't mention the APMG. name. <laughs> no. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're, we're there, we're there, uh, and, and getting to be stronger, as I mentioned during the off hours that we've uh, been talking, it is, uh, we've hired, for instance, 49,000 new people worldwide. And that's worldwide, how many companies. in the Philippines additionally? Oh, we hired uh, uh, close to 100. 100. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Also because the attrition is very high, you know. Yeah. Our competition is not really local, our competition is abroad. Mm -hmm. Filipinos are still in demand abroad. Yeah. Greg, uh, more and more companies are being required to disclose more and more information and data because uh, more and more companies are trying to access public funds through IPO or through borrowings. And therefore, they have to keep or comply with certain standards. How valid or how new are these standards today? Oh, those standards, uh, starting in 2005, the Philippines has decided to adopt international financial reporting standards. And by and large, uh, we have complied. In fact, that's the only thing we were ranked very high in that uh, Corporate Governance Watch 2010. Very good came compliance out. with the IFRS. I IFRS. We got uh, a maximum of 80%, we got 75 yeah. And uh, yet still, even with that very high grade, we were ranked 11 out of 11 Asian countries. Oh, so we are number one. In oh, number IFRS. Yeah. yeah. In so compliance. Kaya hindi naka-80, kulang ng paper band. Well, but, hindi naman siguro. but uh, <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting just a few more. So that more. means our standards are world class. Oh yes, uh, that was uh, not only our opinion locally, but that was uh, the uh, corporate governance watch uh, done by CLSA. Uh, the balance sheets, the uh, financial statements of our companies, are truthful, transparent, easy to understand. No, the right word is fairly stated. Fairly stated, fairly stated in accordance with generally accepted, accepted accounting well, it's principles. In accordance now with financial reporting standards. In accordance, yeah. yes. which means? Uh, which means that uh, by and large it complies yeah. with international financial reporting but standards. But it doesn't mean that it's, very, it's easy to understand those statements. Oh, it's more difficult to understand. In fact, uh, the standards themselves say that uh, not Tim, Tom, Dick, and Harry could understand easily financial statements. You have to have knowledge of economics of finance, of accounting, of labor laws, of legal requirements, if you really want to understand the financial statements. Because I notice uh, many annual reports, the footnotes are longer than the actual annual report. Oh yes, from uh, before 2005, it's not uncommon to see a five or ten page uh, of notes. Now it runs to 80, 100, 80, 150 100, yeah. pages. Yeah. Because of all the disclosures required. The disclosures are, the, they are what they have a section called management discussion. Oh yeah, that's also required. You have, to, required you have to describe the business Everything environment. That has you have happened. to tell the reader who are your competitors, Risk what you are trying. They are even you required have to describe to the previous year, the current year, and the future year. Three years, three at years, least three yeah. years. Yeah. You're even required to simulate. You know, what if, you know, your interest went up? What are the risks? What was the bottom line effect of that? So there's a lot of things. So now. reporting is now very uh, risk oriented. It's risk oriented, and it's also forward oriented in the sense that. 
uh, most of the balance sheet items now are stated at fair values. Fair values. So no longer Current at values. cost. Uh, Current because, values. Yeah, the old standards are purely cost. Mm -hmm. Whether you bought, if you bought this building 50 years ago, how much you paid for it, 50,000, it's still 50,000 mm -hmm. in the books. Now, no longer. You have to disclose now how much is the current value. How do you determine fair value? Well, fair, there's a number of ways uh, to determine fair value. Of course, for hard assets, there's always a appraisal. Or you could always compute, but the right way to do it is what we call value in use. So that means you have to project the income that is stream that you could get from this asset and discount it to present value. So that is your fair value. So in effect, you also inflate the asset of the company. And you it, also inflate the equity. Well, both happens because of the new value, uh, the tendency because of the fair value. The value. But the fair value could be low. Because you increase the value of property that you bought 20 yeah. years ago, you will have a kind of surplus. But sometimes property plant equipment, it's value in use. If you're losing, then the fair value of the property can be lower than cost because yeah. you're losing it. Uh, but generally now, considering yeah. fair values, an equipment is depreciated what? Five years, 10 years? No, it's still uh, whatever is the economic life of the equipment. Which Maybe 10, usually 15, uh, usually 15, 20 15. years. Yeah. Uh, so how has things changed? Has cha things changed dramatically from uh, um, like uh, the case of uh, Enron globally for Deloitte's uh, clients? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, the and how is that reflected here also locally? Well, we're somehow affected because there's still a lot of multinationals here. And we follow international financial reports. What has happened, for instance, in the case of Enron is they passed this uh, very restrictive local sarbanes Oxley Act in the United States. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest issues there was they criminalized financial malfeasance. It used to be just a civil case. So it became criminal. So people are very worried about signing Sir anything. Sarbanes-Oxley is what here? Yeah, Sarbanes-Oxley is 201202. Huh? 201202. And then there was a financial crisis in 2008. In 2008. So that, but, at that uh, time, they that stepped the, back a bit. That was the biggest financial crisis of all time. Mm. That's right. That's and nobody right. went to jail. And Not yet. That means yeah. that the CEO and the CFO can be charged criminally. Yes, whereas it because wasn't. They now it. sign to the truthfulness of, of the, the financial. There's now it's it's now happening. There's a lot of cases now that are being brought forward. It takes years, as you know, the legal system mm -hmm. in the United States against the CEOs and CFOs of many companies. Because mm -hmm. of what they are happened. doing is that they are paying a fine without admitting to anything. Uh, that is uh, in the local scenario that has happened with the that BW scandal. Uh -huh. Remember? They so, paid the fine. Uh, many uh, decided to uh, just pay the fine. And, and they, you know, essentially. That's why that the, the issue of the foreign investors here is that seems to have not been resolved to the satisfaction of everybody. Uh, simply because the SEC has decided it's too disrupted, maybe. And that, uh, okay, you pay the fine and uh, that's it. Mm. So, so, how does that reflect on the investors? Uh, the, the one to come that's in why it has uh, taken quite a bit for them to mm. come back. BW is 99 to 2000. Yeah. So it's only coming back uh, and then in the mid 2000s and then the financial crisis happened. So that's anyway, they say mm. that the more truthful companies are better run and better run companies have better market values. Is that correct? There is a study I, uh, elsewhere that says that uh, people have good governance practices get a premium as much as between 17 to as much as 37% premium in market value. Because there's trust. And they are actually worth, you mean? Well, they're, yeah, compared then they're to actually, yes, compared yeah. to the other competitors. But this is the perception because of the huge institutional investors. But they're very, uh, ano ngayon eh? Risk averse. They're, yeah, risk averse and, and they're militant. Mm -hmm. they, they, they question directors. They mm -hmm. question why you're doing this and why you're doing that. So if they see that you have a transparent uh, system and everybody gets to be able to explain, uh, then they reward you by investing there. So the market price goes and Besides up. now, listed companies, they do investors briefing at quarterly. No? Uh, with or without fundraising. Well, with or without? With or without fundraising. Do briefing quarterly. Showmart, Ayala, all of these companies go abroad just to brief their investors about what's happening, yeah. even if they're not, they're not really raising And the raising executives funds. welcome it because it's a good opportunity for junket. Well, not just junket. Uh, it's a good opportunity to widen your horizon. Because uh, in way. the age of the virtual computer, you don't need that actually. You can access everything in the cloud. That's true, but it's still different. Face to face, face, to face is, is different. Okay, right. we're yeah, going to... I don't need your money uh, at the moment. Why should I face you? I may need you in the future. <laughs> okay. We're going to continue this discussion. We'll be right back. You're watching this. We'll be right back.